Hi, I am Dr. Arsalan Khan and today we are going to discuss an infectious disease, the tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is also called as TB. It may be defined as TB is a chronic, highly infectious disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. TB or tuberculosis, it's a chronic disease. It runs for long time or for long term. It's highly infectious. Infectious means which is caused by the microbes or microorganisms. It's caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. So TB or tuberculosis, it's a highly infectious and chronic bacterial disease which is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Literally, the tuberculosis can be divided into two types, the pulmonary tuberculosis and extra pulmonary tuberculosis. The pulmonary tuberculosis, it affects the lungs. Or the TB which affects the lungs, this is called pulmonary tuberculosis because the word pulmonary refers to the lungs. And the second one, the extra pulmonary TB, it affects the body parts other than lungs. For example, the bones, giants, spine, etc. It's also called as post disease. You can completely understand this extra pulmonary tuberculosis in my previous lecture. But in today's lecture, we will discuss about the pulmonary tuberculosis or the TB which affects the lungs. Pulmonary tuberculosis, it affects the lungs and it's characterized by tubercle formation on the lungs. The tubercles are outgrowths, are lumps, are nodule formation on the lungs. And these tubercles are the characteristic features of the tuberculosis. Sometimes the TB or tuberculosis remains asymptomatic and non-contagious. Non-contagious means that it cannot be transmitted to any other person. In such form of tuberculosis is called latent tuberculosis. The tuberculosis disease is antique and was found in ancient times. However, it was firstly reported by Richard Morton in 1689. And this disease is highly prevalent in Asian and African countries. Now we'll discuss the etiology of the disease. Tuberculosis is a bacterial disease and it is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. It can be represented as MTB, mycobacterium tuberculosis. So the short form of mycobacterium tuberculosis is MTB. It's a small sized bacteria, aerobic, capsulated, bacillus are rod shaped. The wall of the bacteria contains mycolic acid. Therefore, it cannot be identified through gram staining technique. This mycobacterium tuberculosis can be identified through Z. Nelson stain. This is a special stain developed for this bacteria. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is also called as acid fast bacteria. It's a spore forming bacteria. This bacteria is also immotile. The tuberculosis disease can primarily be transmitted from one person to other person through respiratory tract. For example, sneezing of the infected person, coughing, spitting, mucus or phlegm of the infected person as well as the disease can be transmitted through aerosol or the disease bears aerosol transmission and through direct body contact. These are the primary routes of transmission of the tuberculosis. Next are the risk factors. As you know that the tuberculosis, it is the disease of poor people are low socio-economic status, low socio-economic status of the people. It increases the chances or opportunities of the infection. So these are the three factors which render a person to the infection of tuberculosis. These are malnutrition, which weakens the immunity of the body, the unhygiene, and the third one is overcrowding. So these are the three factors which increases the opportunity of tuberculosis. Now we'll discuss the pathogenesis of tuberculosis. Pathogenesis is a pathological term. It means the progressive development of the disease inside the body. Primarily the bacteria, mycobacterium tuberculosis or MTB enters the body through respiratory tract as we have discussed earlier through coughing, sneezing or aerosol transmission. From where it reaches the lungs. Basically the MTB or mycobacterium tuberculosis, it reaches the alveolar sacs or alveolar macrophages of the lungs. Inside the macrophages of the alveoli are alveolar macrophages. These form endosomes. Endosomes means the collection of cell organelles, collection of cell organelles like Golgi, vacuole, and lysosome, etc. This is called the endosome. So the MTB it progresses or develop in the endosome of the lungs. And inside the endosome, because the macrophages, these are also called as phagocytes. So the MTB develops in the phagosomes. Are the MTB developing in the phagocytes? It forms the phagosome. These phagosomes, the macrophages, these combine to the lysosomes. 
for the killing of the bacteria mycobacterium tuberculosis so it forms the phagolysosome the phagolysosome has been resulted here it which is the combination of endosome macrophages as well as the lysosomes these all structures have been gathered to kill the mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria but these failed to kill this bacteria this structure failed to kill mtb because mtb is highly resistant due to presence of capsule of mycolic acid in its cell wall and eventually the macrophages are killed when these macrophages are killed the immune system of the lungs have been collapsed these form the outgrowth are lumps are nodules on the lungs such nodules are called tubercles so the first lesion on the lungs have been appeared in the form of lumps or nodules called lung tubercles so when these tubercles have been developed this disease is called tuberculosis and it should also be kept in mind that 90% cases of the tuberculosis these are latent asymptomatic and non infectious however 10% of the tuberculosis diseases progress to active tb and this pathogenesis takes place and lungs or other body parts are affected now we'll discuss the stages of tuberculosis there are three stages of tuberculosis the exposure stage latent stage and active tb stage in the first exposure stage the disease is transmitted from infected person to the healthy person in which the mycobacterium tuberculosis is transmitted through respiratory route the second is the latent phase in which the bacteria does not develop sign and it is not contagious or not infectious this is called latent stage 90% cases of the tb are latent and the third one is the dangerous stage the active tb stage in which, in which the symptoms as well as the pathological lesions appear on the lungs or other body parts in the form of formation of nodules and tubercles and this is the progressive tuberculosis stage so these were the three stages the exposure latent and active tb these are the clinical signs of tuberculosis the primary sign is the fever due to infection because it is caused by a bacteria due to fever the chills and night sweats occur there is chronic productive cough productive productive cough means in which the sputum has been released in some cases hemoptysis may also occur hemoptysis means coughing up blood or in which the blood is released during the cough wasting or weight loss due to deficiency of oxygen or hypoxia or deficiency of oxygen due to destruction or damage to the lungs destruction of lungs cause deficiency of oxygen or hypoxia which is characterized by fatigue and destruction of muscles destruction of muscles reduces the body weight destruction of the muscles reduces the body weight and this is called wasting or weight loss so tuberculosis it is also called as wasting disease because the body weight is significantly reduced in it reduced body weight and it is the characteristic sign of the tuberculosis and the person after losing the weight it appears hide bound condition in which the patient loses the muscles and body weight anorexia or loss of appetite loss of appetite is called anorexia there is chest pain due to formation of tubercles on the lungs there is scar formation on the upper lobes of the lungs leading to destruction of the lungs the disease can be diagnosed through different techniques depending upon the availability of the resources and the approach of clinician some of the ways of diagnosis are discussed here these are the clinical signs as we have discussed in the previous paragraph are the chest x-ray showing a tubercle on the lungs the sputum culture containing the mycobacterium tuberculosis followed by zeal nelson staining because it is an acid fast bacteria so the acid fast staining is zeal nelson staining in which the pink rods appear on the contrast background another technique is tuberculin test a commonly used technique for diagnosis of tuberculosis is tuberculin test it is injected at the rate of 0.1 ml intradermally the tuberculin antigen may be mammalian type or avian type these both antigens of the tuberculin are injected at 1 inches gap and after 72 hours the lesion is examined which is characterized by a specific swelling this swelling is measured by vernier caliper for cut off value and by measuring swelling on the lesion site after 72 hours can easily show the positive or negative signs of tuberculosis another technique are ct scan and mri while the molecular techniques are elisa and pcr these are the molecular techniques for confirmation of the bacteria now the treatment of tuberculosis as you know that tuberculosis is a bacterial disease so antibiotics are prescribed with this disease and the course of treatment is of 6 months duration without missing a single dose 
If a single dose of antibiotic is missed, then the course is restarted from that particular day up to the 6 months period. The commonly used antibiotics in this disease are rifampicin, rifambutin, pyrazinamide, ethambutal, isoniazid or streptomycin and these are prescribed for a period of 6 months without missing a single dose. And mostly the combination therapy is performed in which two or more of these antibiotics are prescribed in combination to the patient. And in case of multiple drug resistant tuberculosis, the treatment can be extended up to 24 months or 2 years. Now the prevention of tuberculosis, it can be prevented effectively by BCG. BCG is the vaccine or immunization technique, it is 90% effective and means that the bacillus, calmate, Gurin. Bacillus is the shape of bacteria, the rod shed bacteria. And Calmet and Gurin, these are named after the scientist who developed this vaccine. The Albert Calmet and Camilo Gurin. So, they were the two scientists who developed this vaccine. And this vaccine is named after these two scientists, the Albert Calmet and Camilo Gurin. Albert Calmet and Camilo Gurin. And this BCG vaccine, it is injected intradermally in the infants soon after their birth. And single dose of BCG is sufficient for the prevention of tuberculosis. So this was all about the tuberculosis. Hope you will learn a lot in this lecture. Thank you.